It's an absolutely beautiful fall morning. Hopefully we'll get a chance to share some of the fall color as it starts to change. I bet today, all well, the last three days, are really gonna kick it into high gear. Look at the amount of frost on these timbers. Look at that, one morning. That frost is so thick. Oh man, no pressure. So last evening we threw a log up on the sawmill and we're getting better at putting logs on the mill, but not great at it. And man, everything's frozen. Everything's frozen over here. Gosh, probably have to warm the backhoe up, warm the sawmill up. At least the sun's out, I guess. I can't believe I'm saying that after the summer that we've had. Uh, so we threw a log up on the sawmill and this happened. So the challenge that we have is that uh, the logs are kind of over here. So when we lift them, all I can do is bring them closer to me and set them down. But then I have to move it down the mill to get it on the mill. You can see the butt. Butts are over there. I want the butt right here. These, this sawmill is so light compared to the logs. That's where the leg was. All I was trying to do was lift and gently move the log that way. And the whole stinking sawmill moved. What I'm hoping is that by some miracle this morning with the backhoe, I can try to pull this sawmill back where it was. The good news is you can still see where the feet were. It's not, I guess the biggest issue is that we've already spent a tremendous amount of time calibrating this mill. And if it moves every time we put a log on it, now we've got problems. I bought a battery disconnect the other day to put on here because the disconnect is actually on the ground which I have a hunch, and we'll, I guess, prove that today or not. I'm not sure why you would ground or disconnect the ground. That makes no sense to me, because if something is grounded elsewhere and you have the positive terminal connected, well, I guess in theory, the battery's disconnected from the ground. I don't know, like in my mind, I guess for a second there, I was thinking that you would always disconnect the positive. That way, if anything were grounded out, it wouldn't discharge the battery, but I guess if the battery is disconnected, so I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with this disconnect. I mean, I know it works, so, because you can use it to, sh you know, shut the tractor off. So I disconnected this battery last night because I'm getting really annoyed. Oh, it's back to the battery disconnect. It was a, it was like a $5 Swan disconnect and it didn't work. Total piece of junk. So I'm going to put this on here this morning except I'm trying to hold a camera while I'm doing it. So that never works. And hopefully the battery didn't discharge overnight. I know some people have said, oh, your alternator's not putting out, which is not true because we've been running the backhoe to charge the battery up. We basically just use the car to jump it to get it running. But the backhoe is what's charging the battery, not anything else. So I was thinking that there was like a phantom load somewhere, but with the ground disconnected, I don't see how that's even possible unless the disconnect's just not working. The answer is no. So I have a hunch this is a bad battery. I We had it tested a long time ago and it pulled full cranking amps, but I think something's actually wrong with the battery. I have to say this, it's gotta be about 20, three degrees out right now and uh, diesels do not like cold weather. So I have a hunch this is kind of a preview of what this winter is gonna be like. We're probably gonna wanna keep a block heater or something on this when we know we're gonna need it. <laughs> Otherwise it's gonna be really hard to start. Which is funny cause this thing fires right up. Like it, it runs great, it runs fantastic. I did wonder if uh, the battery being dirty, you know, or having moisture on it was affecting it. So I kept that nice and tidy not an issue. So I have a hunch that we've just got a battery issue here. I am going to put a knife disconnect on here and hopefully that will <clears throat> help to eliminate the, uh, the night switch question. He's bold for sure. Woo. There's a problem I didn't see having. The blade lubricant was actually frozen. The lubricant in the lines wasn't frozen necessarily. Maybe because the sun's already warmed that up. So you guys out there that sawmill in the winter, how do you keep your lubricant thawed? I'm thinking probably a little bit of alcohol. I just don't know if it's a good idea to run that through the wood miser. So I'll probably ask my good friend Rob over at wood miser, see what he thinks. But if you guys have a tip, an antifreeze isn't the solution. I don't want antifreeze all over my wood. So don't suggest that. So 
so there's probably 45 minutes of our morning just adjusting this and it's it's actually gonna need to be recalibrated we've got some loose legs and I think the moral of this story is probably two things one if you're gonna set up a mill permanently it really is important to have a good foundation and probably pour a piece of concrete. I guess that's my opinion. In this situation, this mill in theory is only here temporarily for two reasons. One, our septic system runs along the foot of this hill and we don't really want the mill here. It's really only here to get the timber frame milled up and then this mill is actually gonna go on a trailer and become a portable mill. But that said, when you're working with such high precision pieces like beams, you know having these trailer pads it's really just i don't know i feel like maybe we should have done the slap thing i guess is what i'm saying the other moral of the story is don't move the mill so if you can't move the log without sliding it move the backhoe whatever you got to do to lift it move it and put it in place because this mill weighs nothing in comparison with these logs and since our pads every single leg is different because we've got these wonky pads sitting down here even though they're meh, level it's just an absolute headache so hopefully we'll get a system down that we don't move the mill and keeps everything in calibration. This morning I'm working on a super straight log and I'm still trying to tackle the most difficult pieces. And giving this one a quick look. So this log, I'm pretty confident, will have an eight by 12 in it. If there's not, I'm, I was hoping there might be an eight by 15, but that's probably pushing it. Here's eight inches. Mm, I think that's pushing it, but there might be down down that way, you know, because the logs gonna get this is the skinny end We only need a 20. I think we need 21 foot. So if I come down here seven feet There might be an 8 by 15 in there. I'm not really sure how to figure that out I guess I really haven't come up with a method to figure out, you know in the middle of a log What is available and it seems like a tragedy to cut this only to find out there's not a beam in there. All right, I'm gonna try something. It's probably not the typical way to do this, but I'm going to just get flat sides on this so that I can, one, calibrate the mill, and two, try to get a better idea about what's actually inside this log as far as dimensions. And if I cut an eight inch side on the top and an eight inch side on this side, I think that that will, and by, by that I mean like an eight inch face on each side, that will probably give me a very accurate idea. Uh, you know, I can measure off of those square sides and start to determine what's actually in the log vertically and, and laterally. Well, I was hoping to time lapse through this entire log and I'm working really hard to maximize this thing. I think I'm going to get floor joists, a post, and brace material. But I just broke our very first blade. I don't even know what caused it to break. I'm not quite sure yet, so I'm going to do some diagnostics and see if I can figure it out. Looks like it's in there pretty good. Humdinger. Can't tell. Looks like it just snapped off. Well, unfortunately, when the blade broke, we also got a couple of munches in our drive belts. And I just talked to Woodmiser, and apparently I misunderstood. So apparently the blades need to be sharpened every two hours. I don't know where I got 20 hours from. What is What a difference a zero makes, right? So what happens is after two hours, when the blade starts to dull a little bit, it starts to stress the gullet which is right at the bottom of the tooth where it meets the band. And if it starts to get hot, which I don't know that was happening, but it stresses the blade too much with a bandsaw and you'll get a crack in that gullet and that's when the band breaks. So we have 15 blades and so we probably should have changed our blade like three times by now or four times and we didn't change it at all. So I learned something today about our wood miser and hopefully we'll stay on top of this stuff. There's a tremendous amount of little maintenance things that need to be done and uh, hopefully I can keep on top of that stuff with the checklist they've provided, double checking tensions and rotating belts and doing a lot of stuff to make sure this thing cuts good. The good news is they're gonna overnight some belts for us and so um, tomorrow hopefully we'll get those and we should be up and running. Uh, I talked to Brett there at Woodmiser and he said it was okay to try these belts out and he didn't think they'd be a problem. So they still got a lot of a lot of cords and things left in them. They just got little munches on the face. So we'll try that out and uh, hopefully we can get some production done today and then we'll be back up and running tomorrow with fresh everything. Well, it definitely 
cut, so that's a good sign. Lost a little bit of rubber on it there, trying to uh, make the first cut, but we're gonna try it. I hope it's a good decision. I just have to share this piece of wood before I cut it. Look at this thing. 8 by 16 on this end. Can't quite get an 8 by 15 out of it that's worth using for a tie beam. Two reasons. One, I don't like that big knot. And I totally could be dreaming. But this wane down here is what's going to get me. So I'm going to cut this into an 8 by 14. And then I'm going to cut a 6 by 8 out of the top. And that'll leave me an 8 by 8 in the bottom and that'll give us one of our long posts and two floor joists and then I also got these three slabs which will be turning into brace material they'll be four by six this one log is yielding a tremendous amount it was a monster anyway but I just had to share this before I cut it Anchor seal's feeling a little too light for my liking. Jesse thinks the rag is in here. Haha. <laughs> -ha. That's the one. The dark ends have already been anchor sealed, so we don't need to worry about that. And then the light ends. We need to get some anchor seal on pronto. Some would argue that iPhones are just a terrible, terrible thing that's rotting our brain, and I would argue that they're quite useful because if it weren't for that iPhone photo I took last night, I might not remember what was written on this log. Feeling a lot of stress over this trench here. I feel that it's something I can tackle almost 100% on my own, yet this stuff is still kind of new to me and I feel like there could be still decisions to make. Um, I don't know. I have seven pieces of conduit, so I'm gonna get those glued. It's exactly what you wanna be doing when you have 24 people coming to your property for a timber framing workshop in less than three weeks is working on an electrical and a plumbing project. Awesome. If you were wondering what my definition was of a fun time, that's it. I was hoping it'd be a long time before we were back in this trench. Wow. Guess I forgot the job was unfinished. But I'm not gonna be sad when we have a huge water system that is not frozen. All right, I'm out. I'm out of parts. Gotta go get more. Gotta go help Jesse. Four at a time. Nice. Wow, it's so pretty.
That's our 20th floor joist? No. Okay. So I'm kind of going after like the hard stuff first. Okay. So these floor joists are the some of the longest. We need uh, one 14 footer, Yep. but these are all 12s. And so I'm just gonna keep working my way down the list. So that's why I'm using a like a alphanumeric number so you don't get confused. It doesn't mean there's 21 oh, of them. Oh, I know that. You're just, that's yeah. the 20th. Yeah, and then this post over here is, oh wait, and then this is a floor joist, but it's a real shorty. We need four three, or four eight footers. So this is FJ31. FJ31, you're done, buddy. <laughs> we need three more of those. It is a long post. We only need four of them, but I'm gonna make this the longest one because it's 20 feet. Because we got it. Because we got it. So I'm gonna make this L, P, and it's number four. As the logs get smaller, they get easier to flip. Ready? Yep. Go. Oh, good. I don't know. Do you? Uh, I'm just holding it here. Okay. But I can't lift up anymore. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Two, three. Go. Easy. Oh, sorry. Top heavy. Push hard and it'll out. We find that the larger logs like this, it's harder to make square cuts because once it gets really tall, it's not being supported by the braces anymore. So it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's just challenging to get a square cut. So once you get three square sides, it's much easier. You can just shave off what you need. So where do you want shims? Okay. Uh -oh. okay. Do you want more? That's it. Okay. Let's try that. We need to do the other side. Are we good? Well, let's do the other side and see what happens here. Kay. This is still, it's closer, but it's still yep. not good. Really? Gosh. Let me know when you're ready. I've been pushing. Oh, okay. More? Are you happy? Um, now this one's saying it's over just a little okay. bit. Okay. I can pull it out of here. So, that's okay. Let me kind of just okay. push on it. How's that? You did? I did, but okay. do you want more? Um, that's pretty good. Yeah. 
Even the little pieces are heavy. Oh, that's way better. Wow. Muy perfecto. Do you think that's my cover crop? It probably likes the sawdust. No, I think that's weed. Uh, maybe I should go on your side. Come over here. Yeah, I think that'll be better. Gentle, they said. <laughs> We're having our same problem with almost, not every beam, but most beams. Well, I would say every beam because- Every beam. Unfortunately, so we talked to Woodmiser and they said if you put these mills on concrete, they're gonna move. Well, ours is on concrete. I don't know if we should have put it on this, well, you know? Not too late. We can take it off and stick it in the dirt. You know, I thought leveling it on the concrete Pads would be, be easier, easier, but turns out maybe not because it just moves. You know. Yep. I don't know. But basically, I think it's safe to say that it's not the bed that's messed up. Um, we're definitely coming to that conclusion that basically, if this thing gets moved at all, plan on having to recalibrate it because. It just well, take really anything and to, to be fair, if you had a level concrete pad that moves, not a big deal. But mm. our pads, believe it or not, these started out all level to one another. We did it with a laser level, but now they're all sorts of messed up. Yep. Each one's like a different height. They're all rotating different ways. Um, so when it gets shifted half an inch, yes, it matters. Well, it wouldn't matter if you were just cutting lumber. Like, your lumber probably wouldn't hardly be off in 10 feet. I mean, you wouldn't even notice it. It'd be off by less than a 16th. But we're cutting beams that are 28 feet long. You know, if you're off by even a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, it shows. Like, this this one's pretty close. You know, it's within, what, less than... It's it's a, an eighth. Yeah, it's an eighth. We have an eighth difference. Yeah. But... We're not trying to get perfect. We're just trying not to be off by a mile. Yep, so Jesse's solution that he's found is... See, this is not even sitting on anything. Really? So, that's okay. That's so, there's a gap at that end, so we're gonna jack this up a little bit, and then we're gonna lower the legs. Actually, I guess raise the bed. Okay, so, so the you're just making these tight then. We're not we're jacking the beam up. Fire. Alyssa misspoke. like the far one's loose too? Yes. Okay. We got the beds level-ish again, which means we're good yes. until next log. left-handed people don't make a shadow right now. <laughs> 